Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Joyce Park. I am a board certified dermatologist and today I am kicking off a new series for 2023 where once a month I'm going to go over a dermatology deep dive. So we're going to spend time really delving into a skin condition, hair condition, or nail condition, one that I commonly see and treat in my practice. I think this is a good opportunity for me to share some of the knowledge and all this education that I've received about dermatology. There's a lot of stuff that's online, like you could Google all of these different skin diseases or different types of treatments for hair loss or nail diseases, but it's hard to know what to trust, what to believe, and kind of how to make sense of it all. So I figured this would be a good series for me to break down the science, go over how I would evaluate a patient with this condition in my office, and go over a treatment plan so that you can be a little more informed if you are also going through this condition or if you think you might have this condition and you want to go and find a doctor to help you through it. So today, to kick off this series of dermatology deep dives, we are going to start with telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is the fancy medical term for what I like to think of as stress-associated hair loss. So typically our hair goes through three phases. There is antigen, which is the growing phase, which about 90% of the hairs on our head are in at any given time. There's catagen, which is kind of like this transitional period from antigen through to telogen, the third phase, which is the shedding phase. And about 10% of the hairs on our head are in this telogen shedding phase at any time. So what happens in telogen effluvium is that our body undergoes some huge physical or emotional stressor. And this actually shocks our hair and way more of our hairs move into the telogen phase, way more than 10%. When we see this happening, then as this telogen phase runs its course, which usually takes about three to four months, then we see a massive shedding of hair after those three to four months, leading people to freak out understandably and wonder what the heck is going on. So some of the typical causes that trigger this telogen effluvium, well, the one that I see a lot in my practice and my friends and something that I've experienced personally is pregnancy. When you labor and then push a child out, I mean, that is a huge stress on your body. Most women will find that about three to six months after they give birth, they see a massive exodus of hair from their heads. That's probably the most common scenario that most people will experience telogen effluvium. Other ones are a ton of weight loss illnesses like COVID. I saw a lot of post COVID hair loss in 2021 surgery. And then there's also emotional stressors. So I have had patients who have gone through just big changes in their lives. Anything you can think of, death of a loved one, divorce, cross country move, losing a job, all of those types of things that can really cause stress to you emotionally can also trigger telogen effluvium. Other than physical or emotional stress, there's a couple other things that can trigger telogen effluvium. One is actually medications. So there are some medications, some of which are very common and that we use a lot that can actually rarely cause telogen effluvium. And those include retinoids, calcium channel blockers, NSAIDs, like even ibuprofen, and even certain types of antidepressants, just to name a few. Malnutrition can also cause hair loss because you do need a good healthy diet in order to grow your hair and have it be very healthy and strong. So in areas where we see a lot of malnutrition or in patients who are suffering from anorexia or bulimia, we do tend to also see telogen effluvium and hair loss. So there is some good news here. Telogen effluvium is typically a temporary condition. So this is self-limited. After all of the hairs that have been shocked into the telogen phase, after they fall out, then the new hairs will grow in and then the cycle resets. The new hairs will then go in their typical pattern of the antigen, the catagen, and the telogen. So even if you do experience telogen effluvium, know that the great, great, vast majority of patients with telogen effluvium will see regrowth of all of their hair back to their normal normal baseline. So you don't have to worry that this is going to be a permanent condition. Now, of course, in some patients, telogen effluvium can actually unmask another type of hair loss. So I have seen rarely a few patients in which telogen effluvium actually kick-started and increased their androgenetic alopecia. So maybe they had the risk for female or male pattern baldness all along, but this telogen effluvium and massive shedding of hair kind of accelerated that process. So when patients come in to see me, if I suspect telogen effluvium, 
them, I'll typically start off by asking them about stressors in their lives. And then I will totally sound like a Sherlock Holmes when I'll ask them, did a significant physical or emotional stress occur to you about three to six months ago? And then usually they'll say, why yes, yes, how did you know? And then I totally feel like a detective. But that's the first thing that I look for is the history. I also ask about diet and other conditions like anemia, thyroid disease. Then I will do an exam. So I will look through the patient's head, their scalp, their hair. I can sometimes do a pull test, which is where I gently tug on a few hairs to see how easily they come out. Usually I don't even need to be pulling hairs out because as I just look through the scalp, hairs will be shedding left and right. That's how massive the shedding is in telogen effluvium. I sometimes will look at the hair under a microscope. So telogen effluviums are what are called club hairs. Like the ends of those telogen effluvium hairs look like clubs because those hairs are being shed. They're being pushed out of the hair roots and being supplanted by a new hair. So sometimes I'll do that. Although most of the time it's very obvious from the history, what is going on. Now there are tons of different types of hair loss. And if you're interested, I can make more YouTube videos in the future going into all the different types and buckets of hair loss. But one important thing I like to do is rule out other types of hair loss. So telogen effluvium is kind of like a diffuse all over the head kind of hair loss. Whereas other conditions, for example, autoimmune alopecia areata, that presents more as like little distinct round patches of baldness. That is not what you see in telogen effluvium. Or there are other hair loss conditions like in plano pilaris, which has a lot of redness in the scalp. There's lupus associated hair loss called discoid lupus. That can look different on the scalp. There's also of course androgenetic alopecia, female or male pattern balding, where we look for hair loss in specific areas of the scalp. So for women, that's more midline widening of the part. For men, that's like a bald spot right at the crown of their head. So I'm also looking to rule out other causes of hair loss that can be impacting this as well. Then after I do the exam, I will have the patient do some basic lab work because there are some medical conditions that can predispose you to hair loss. So I wanna make sure that we are maximizing your health on every level in order to make your scalp healthy and that you can grow and retain hair. So I will usually check thyroid hormone. I'll check a CBC to look at your red blood cell levels. I'll do an iron panel. I'll also check a vitamin D. And then rarely, if I feel like there might be a hormone hormonal issue underlying your hair loss, I may also check hormone levels too. Okay, now that we've talked through the evaluation of telogen effluvium and you guys know what it is, let's talk about the treatment. My general approach to telogen effluvium is that we'll start with the lowest level, low risk treatments because most likely this is going to correct itself. Even if you did nothing and you didn't treat it, the telogen effluvium is going to eventually go away and your hair will return to its baseline before the shedding started. But for my patients who are very worried and want to do something to maybe speed things along, there are a couple things that I recommend. One thing I always recommend is topical minoxidil, or you might've heard of it, the brand name, which is called Rogaine. So minoxidil works in a way that we actually are not completely sure how it works for hair loss, which is crazy to me, I know. But the thought is that it's a vasodilator, meaning it increases the width of your blood vessels so that you get more blood flow to your scalp. And the thought is also that it increases the size of your hair follicles and lengthens that growing phase of your hair. Now, Rogan comes in two forms. There's the men's form and the women's form. Pro tip here, always buy the men's form because the pink tax is real. People charge more just to put the word women's on it and put it in a pink box. So you're not gonna fall for that because you've watched this video and you're gonna always buy the Rogan 5% men's solution or foam. And yes, it is totally appropriate for women to use. This will save you some money. So the solution can be a little bit more irritating, but it might be easier for you to get into your skin. The foam may be a little less irritating. It may take a little bit more time for you to get in the scalp. It's kind of a personal preference as to which one you like and which one you want to buy. I am told that the cheapest version of minoxidil is available on Amazon. Okay, let's move on to supplements. So for telogen effluvium, you don't have to take supplements, but if you want to just do everything that you can, there's a bunch of different brands out there like Nutrafol, Vegamore, Viviscal, and now it feels like there's hair loss gummies everywhere. They're flooding the market. But in the this is a big but. It really depends on the formulation and the percentages of the ingredients that they're putting inside of it. I want to dispel a myth about biotin for hair loss right here. You've probably heard that biotin helps with everything for hair loss is a magical pill. No, it simply is not true. The PR agency for biotin has really been doing a very good job because it's actually a myth. There's no science to support that biotin by itself can magically grow back your hair because it doesn't. In fact, biotin can do some pretty horrible things, meaning it can mess with your thyroid level and it can also mess with the markers of a heart attack. So if you went 
went into the ER and you thought you might be having a heart attack, that marker that we draw to see if you're having a heart attack, it might come back false because you're on biotin. However, biotin in conjunction with all of these other things like vitamin A and saw palmetto, which has natural anti-androgenic properties, horsetail, all of that can be helpful. So the one supplement that I have been recommending to all my patients for years is actually one by Foundation Skincare. This was founded by a dermatologist. I have no conflict of interest. I've never met the guy. I just like his products and I like that I can save my patients money because Nutrafol is expensive and you have to take four capsules a day. Viviscal is also expensive. And I'm gonna share a little chart here that actually compares the ingredients in Nutrafol, Viviscal, and Untangled supplements. And you'll see that Untangled has a lot of the same supplements, a lot of the same vitamins that you would want and you only have to take it twice a day and it's more affordable. So I've been recommending this supplement. Again, no financial conflict of interest. I don't work with the company, but I really like saving my patients money. During this time, as you're waiting for your hair to grow back, I know it's very stressful, but it's very important to remove any stressors in your life. You want to really dig deep, think about what might be causing you stress and just take it out because that is likely contributing to your hair loss. You also want to practice really healthy hair habits. Don't use heat styling tools. Make sure to use heat protectant if you are going to. Minimize UV exposure on your hair, those types of things. I will actually link here to a video that I made about how to protect your hair from all of the aggressors in the environment and how to keep your hair healthy and strong. There are also procedures that we can do for hair loss like platelet rich plasma, but that has been more extensively studied for female and male pattern baldness, androgenetic alopecia. There isn't as much evidence of using it for telogen effluvium, probably because it is super expensive. You need many sessions and telogen effluvium is self-limited anyways. So all it's really doing is speeding up your hair growth process, but your hair will grow back over time anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video. My very first dermatology deep dive on telogen effluvium or stress associated hair loss. I would love to know what other topics you'd like me to do deep dives on in the upcoming weeks. I've thought about it and I've thought about rosacea, melasma, eczema. I'm sure there's a ton of conditions out there, but I want to know what you want to hear about. So please leave a comment below. Let me know what I should talk about in my next dermatology deep dive. And again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.